This is a little different uh, for this channel. It's going to be a conversation about using fountain pens. Um, it's not going to talk about strobes or lighting. Um, although I did get a chance to use my strobes to take the photos and also a really, really old uh, Takamer 135mm M42 lens uh, on some Takamer tubes uh, in order to do some of the close-ups. So, you know, the chance to use the old stuff to talk about this. So, uh, the, a couple of reasons why I'm sharing this. The, the first reason is... Fountain pens are a lot of fun to write with. You're going to hear me say that a few times throughout this uh, brief video. Uh, but there is, a fair, believe it or not, there's a fair amount of information that you kind of get your, kind of have to get your head around before you know you move forward with them. So I'm going to try to talk at a very, very high level about the uh, different things to think about. And also, what I would suggest is that, you know, if this is something that's not on your radar, um, I don't know, maybe think about it. You know, you're uh, uh, already in a creative space if you're working with strobes and with photography. Um, you are probably already interested in customization. And, you know, these pens allow for a lot of customization and uh, a lot of creativity, and that is one of the things that I find appealing about them as well. So, um, you know, I don't uh, use these pens for any other reason that I enjoy them, but if you have a business, I would imagine you potentially are sending out notes, maybe handwritten notes to customers, and this is a way to uh, add a little bit of flair to those. Um, and you may be meeting directly with customers and taking notes during those client meetings. And, you know, if you're using a pen like this, um, and maybe some of the paper that I'm going to talk about, uh, who knows, maybe it's a different connection point. It is a little bit unique and it's not hard in order to get into that kind of unique space. There, there's really nothing magical about using these pens. Um, they look hard, but they're not. So the reason that I think these are fun is because they have a very, or can have a very smooth way of laying down ink on paper. Uh, so if you're familiar with a ballpoint pen and uh, a gel pen, you'll probably know that a gel pen writes a little bit easier than ballpoint. These write easier than a gel. And uh, that process of writing easy allows you to, you know, have sort of, if you will, a little bit nicer handwriting or a little bit nicer cursive, especially while you're writing if you slow down a little bit. So maybe the slowing down is not something you're going to do when you're taking notes, uh, but if you're sending just a couple of sentences in a handwritten note or a card to a customer, you know, you can. You can slow down and it will look a little different. Um, the pens that you see here come in different price points. So uh, I'm going to talk about that. They come in different nib sizes. So that's the uh, sharpness of the point. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. It's actually not necessarily the sharpness of the point, but for this introduction, let's just assume that's the case. And uh, some of them are clear. Those are called demonstrators. Some of them are not. The ones on the right, is in, some of them have a twist-off cap. Some of them have a pop-off cap. Uh, some of them come with an ink cartridge. Some of them come with a converter. Some of them have the option to do both. So those are just different ways that you can put ink into the pen. And, uh, you know, the pen ink that I typically am trying to use comes from a bottle. So I'll talk a little bit about how you get the ink in. So, um, this is, uh, if you, you know, if you were to start with one pen, this brand, uh, it's called Twisby. They're made in Taiwan. Um, you know, you can't go wrong, in my opinion, starting with this. This is one of their higher end models. It is, uh, I gotta take a look at the pen. It's called a Diamond 580 um, ALR. The ALR means it has some aluminum in it. Um, but if you get just the normal 580 pen, 
Uh, they're about $50, and they come with a lot of features. So first of all, they work really well. Um, they can be uh, customized with the colors. So here you see it's blue uh, for the, the accents on the pen. There's actually blue ink in it, um, but you know you have to get the ink. And it's called a piston filler. So what that means is the ink actually goes into the body of the pen, and what that means is it can hold a lot of ink. So the ink is water-based, and because the ink is water-based, you tend to go through it faster than you would in a ballpoint or a gel pen. Um, you're not always replacing the ink, uh, and it's not that hard to replace the ink, but um, you know, you're going to learn, when you, if you're interested, that you can use these piston fillers, which tend to come on a little bit more expensive pens, uh, a cartridge, which means the um, the vendor of the pen is is pre-packaging the ink, and then you just click that cartridge into the back of the pen. And then there's a third option, which is called a converter. Um, and the pen that you're seeing here on the left, uh, it's a it's a pilot student pen that has a converter in it, and that that's something that allows you to. Uh, use bottled ink and get that into the pen. So different ways to get ink into the pens. Uh, and, you know, for pure convenience, you'd want to use the cartridges to express yourself with all of the different varieties of colors of inks that are out there. You're going to want to go with bottled ink. Uh, and I like the bottled ink. Um, most of the pens, when you buy them, they're going to come with uh, one or two cartridges from the vendor. When you take a look at the, uh, the nibs, the, the nib is actually the metal part. And on the tip of the nib, I guess they call that the point. I don't really know. Uh, mine come in two flavors. They're either fine or medium. So the pen on the left, which is the uh, student pilot pen uh, made by pilot, um, that's a really fine point. It's a, it's, it's a fine point pen. The Twisby on the right, the blue one is medium, the black one is a sailor, it's called a Pro Gear Slim. That has another fine point, and then the Pilot Pen on the right, it's a Pilot Elite that has a medium. So you can see the, the blue one and the one on the right, the far right one, both have a little bit thicker, if you will, point. And that just means that when you're writing, it's more of a smooth experience, more ink is going on the page, and the line is going to be thicker. So uh, surprisingly, if you get pens from uh, primarily from Japan, they tend to a fine point from Japan might write finer than a fine point from Europe. So in Europe, the well, let me go back. In Japan, the big companies are going to be the big and old companies are Pilot, uh, a company called Platinum. Platinum Preppy is a great starter pen. Uh, you know, a lot of people really enjoy those. I, I don't have one. I don't really need one, but, the, you know, they seem like they'd be a lot of fun. They're under $10. Uh, and then Sailor. Um, and Sailor is a really old company, too. Pilot and Sailor are over 100 years old. In, uh, in Germany, a couple of the big companies are going to be uh, called Lamy and Pelican. And... Uh, they have really, really nice pens. Their medium um, is going to be maybe a little bit broader than a Japanese medium. Their fine might be a little bit broader than a Japanese fine. It's just different styles, I guess, between the regions of the world. Uh, but they all operate kind of in the same uh, in the same way. This is just another kind of close-up of the uh, the points on the nib. The one on the left is. Uh, has a little bit thicker than one on the right. The Pro Gear Slim from Sailor is, is very thin. And so with a thin one, you tend to get kind of, uh, you can get some feedback from the paper. Um, it can be a little bit scratchy. Uh, but the fine pen, you know, if you're writing numbers or if you really like small print, uh, you can't beat it. Um, and if you want really flowy type writing, then you're going to go, you know, to a medium or something called a broad or um, in, in, in kind of in that range. 
So where you can buy these, I'll leave some links below. There are some retailers in the United States. So uh, one is uh, Anderson Pens. Uh, they're in Wisconsin, and they also have uh, retail in Chicago. So you can stop in if you're in Appleton or in Chicago and try out their pens. Uh, another one is uh, called Goulet Pens. And both Anderson and Goulet... Uh, and, and this next one called Jet Pens, all three of those have a wealth of information about anything and everything that I'm talking about here. And uh, not only are they a good place to go to get a pen or to get ink uh, or to get um, information about them, but you can also, they, they curate paper. So they've, they've highly selected different types of papers that are going to work great with these types of pens. So the paper's kind of cool. Um, I'm not going to get into that, but that's another way that you can have a really nice experience with these pens. Um, the And so I bought the Twisby pen from one of the online retailers, but the other pens I bought from Amazon. And the reason that I bought them from Amazon is because they were sourced directly from Japan. And because they were sourced from Japan, they were less expensive. Uh, and if you want to get a little bit more into the weeds on this, you know, the U.S. retailers, and I'm, I would assume it's the same in Europe or in Asia, the stationery stores over there would be the same way. You're going to have a probably maybe a, a better selection of pens. So the pens, you know, they don't all come in like red or blue or clear or black. You know, you can get the Pro Gear Slim on the right in a whole variety of different colors. And not only can you buy it in different colors, but they have limited editions that come out. So if you're into that level of collecting, um, it's going to be hard on Amazon because you're limited to whatever they have. Um, but if you're not that concerned about those features and you find, you know, primarily I would say the, the size of the nib that you want um, and the company and the model that you want, then yeah, it's a great way to save money. In fact, a lot of money. And uh, you can even get a little bit more crazy uh, by going directly to retailers in Europe or retailers in in Japan, and by retail I mean like a stationery store, um, I'll leave a link to an article that talks about trying to buy directly from Japanese stationery stores. Uh, it gets complicated, but the, the there's two payoffs. One can be less expensive, and two, you can get products that are only available to Japanese customers. So if you, you know, are really into it and you really need that special color of pen, um, that's, that's a path for you to get something that not a lot of people are going to have. So, yeah, they are fun. They work well. They're going to look nice if you're sending out a handwritten note. Uh, we live in an age where, you know, I could have written part of this dialogue from you know, chat GPT, you know, and used artificial intelligence. So uh, these pens are going to sort of, you know, get you a little closer to analog and maybe your customers like that. I don't know. Um, I don't have customers. So I like using them because they're a lot of fun to write with. Let me know if this is the, uh, if I shouldn't make, <laughs> I don't really have other ideas for other videos. Um, but who knows if this is just something that is really not appropriate to put on this channel. Um, but you know, you're working with old strobes, uh, and I should say you can buy these as vintage pens. Um, Anderson pens is a great place to go there. So you can buy a pen a hundred years old that works and man, do those things look great and they don't really cost that much money. Uh, so let me know. And